Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on Mr. Murray's Mathland here. And uh, we're taking a look at a very uh, specific type of problem that pops up often on uh, multiple choice, free response kinds of things. And uh, this is when you have a calculator. That's, that's the key to this problem. You have a calculator with you and you are given the derivative of a function and you are given one point, uh, one value on the original f of x and you're trying to find another. Okay, so obviously it's going to involve some integration here, uh, but if you're looking at this, this you cannot integrate. This is not something that, that you can come up with the antiderivative of and you know put a plus c and solve for the c by plugging in the point. And so we're going to use definite integrals and the calculator to help us do this. So you keep that in mind. That's going to, on the AP exam, they're going to give you problems like this. So uh, in this problem in particular, we have been given f of 5 and we're asking for f of 12. So if you have trouble with this relationship that we're about to do, you can always do what I'm about to do and just start from here and say, look, those are my two key x values. I know there's some integration involved. Let me set up a definite integral between those two key x values, 5 to 12, and, and going in order, right, chronologically. Uh, and if I integrate f prime of x dx, whatever that derivative may be, I'm going to get f of x, the antiderivative, and then I'm going to plug in the top limit and subtract plugging in the bottom limit. It's going to give you the difference between f of 12 and f of 5, right? So what we're really looking for here is what's f of 12? So I can just manipulate this. This is just an equation like any other. I can just add uh, f of 5 to the other side right over here. And so what I'm going to have is that regardless of what that derivative may be, f of 5 plus that definite integral from 5 to 12 f prime of x dx should give you f of 12, the value you really want, right? Okay, so in fact, I'm going to take that and kind of bring it on over here, here. Okay. Do a little uh, erasing there. Okay, so let's just use what we have here and uh, find that. So this is 17 plus and this is what we're going to use the calculator for because I don't know how to integrate that by hand and so I doubt you do either. And uh, let's go here. So let's bring in the calculator for this. And so this is going to be a little review of how to use the calculator as well and how to input maybe some more complicated uh, equations here. Uh, so w one thing, you could do this all on the home screen frequently with FRQs and some other things you might be using the graph feature so I'm gonna to go to the graph even though I'm really not going to use the graphing features I'm gonna to go to y equals and I'm gonna put this f prime in as my y1 and it's a big fraction so I'm gonna use the uh, fraction feature here which is it's in the f1 menu so I'm gonna hit alpha y equals and that brings up the f1 and there's the fraction button and then in the numerator 13, sine, and notice it's sine squared, uh, but I can't put that squared there notationally with the calculator, so I'll put the argument of 4x, and then when you put the squared on the outside, the calculator recognizes that as the sine of 4x being squared. And then we'll divide it all by 4x plus 5. Okay. So that's our f prime, and I could look at the graph and do all kinds of things, but I'm just going to have that stored there in y1. And, and maybe, if nothing else, just to illustrate something you can do on the home screen if you're not aware of it. So what we're doing here is we're going to calculate that definite integral from 5 to 12 that we want. So we go to math 9, math 9, you can type 9 or scroll down and select it. Brings up that nice definite integral from 5 to 12 of our f prime of x. Now here's where you could just type that, uh, you know, derivative again, or the first time if you wanted the big fraction. Or if you do have something stored like this and you want to use it on the home screen, 
uh, you can just put Y1, which is where it's stored, as a little shortcut. So I'm going to go to Alpha Trace. That's where you get the little shortcuts here, the F4 menu, Alpha Trace, Y1. You can also go to the var, you know, variables, you know, bars, Y bars, to find that. Uh, but the F4 is a little shortcut for it. And then on the end, of course, your, your derivative, uh, your integrals with respect to x, and this will calculate that. And of course, there, there is a trig expression in there, uh, so you definitely want to make sure you're in radian mode, as you always should be uh, for calculus, but who knows if you lend your calculator to somebody. And uh, it doesn't hurt to check. And now we give it a moment. Yeah, even the calculator may need a few moments. It's doing a pretty complicated... Uh, algorithm in there. And there we go. The value of that is 1.23057. You know, you only need accurate to three places. So that, and right while it's on the screen, you can just add 17, or I could have done that initially, 17 plus that definite integral. Or did I really need a calculator to do that? I don't know, but I was in the I was in the zone with the calculator. And so there we go. And uh, one more thing here, we've got a second part to this uh, just to show you. Uh, a similar, very similar, almost identical kind of procedure, but you know the same derivative and the same given point, uh, and they want another value on the original function. But it's chronologically, you know, comes before. I want f of 2, which comes before f of 5. So if you get confused by the order, uh, you can, again, just go back to this kind of setup and, and work your way around here that from 2 to 5, f prime uh, dx is equal to f of 5 minus f of 2. And f of 2 is the one you want. So in this case, I'm really manipulating and bringing f of 2 over. And that will be f of 5 minus that definite integral. Right? And hopefully, you know, a lot of this stuff makes sense also. We use this a lot in our uh, context of uh, position and, and velocity. And, and to go back to this one, you know, you can think of it as this is a known position, and I have the velocity equation. And what am I doing? I'm calculating the displacement or that change in position. So I'm taking a known position and adding on its change in position to get the new position. And when you go kind of backwards in time, you're taking a known position and this time subtracting out the displacement, you know, to figure out where you used to be at, at f of 2. So very similar idea, but you know, don't let the, the fact that it's behind you know the point mess you up. So I'm going to go back. I still have this. Um, you can even scroll back if you've already done one of these integrals and, and bring this back again. And uh, I'll just change this to 2. To 5. And while we're at it here, if you like, I'm going to go and I'm going to insert f of 5, which is 17. So I'm going to insert 17 minus, and this way I'll just do it all in one big step, right? So there we go. We give the calculator a moment. And therefore, f of, uh, f of 2 is about 15.978, or 977. Remember, on the AP, accurate to three decimals means you can round or truncate, as long as you got a minimum of three decimal places, and you're good to go. So hopefully this, uh, you know, helped, up this, helped out with this one specific kind of question, which sometimes trips people up. Uh, but, you know, just be aware of it if, I'm, if you're on a calculator section. And there we go. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, keep working hard, kids.